Today I want to go about showing you how you can actually use the PVB um, to look at what look, proteins look like. Um, so they're exocrystallography structures. And so we've talked about exocrystallography and how it's this technique where you get a protein to crystallize and then you shoot crystal, you shoot x-rays at the crystals and then x-rays scattered by the atoms making up the protein and then those scattered x-rays come together and they like cancel each other out or they build each other up and then they go and they hit a detector and then you get this pattern of spots called a diffraction pattern and then you work backwards from the diffraction pattern to get this meshy blobby thing called an electron density map and then you build the model into that and so the model is this like pretty earth looking thing like this where you see those like curves and that like these sticky things so that's where they build this model showing the position of the atoms based on the electron density map that they got based on the diffraction pattern that they got based on the structure of the protein in the crystal. And so I'm not going to talk about all that today, but what I want to talk about is that final product. And so when they get that final product, they deposit it in this thing called the PDB, the Protein Data Bank. Today, this is an edited version of a video, longer video I made before, so if you want the whole thing, you can go to YouTube. Um, but today, I need to focus on some of my own research. Um, and so I hope that you don't mind me kind of cheating today. Um, but yeah kind of hard to be earning a PhD while doing all this. Um, so yes, yeah, so hope this helps you get the most out of the PDB and the pictures you look at. So if we just look at the basic information, um, it'll tell us like the type of protein it is, the organism. So this is a homo sapiens, so it's a human protein. It was expressed in E. coli, so basically they used bacteria to make the protein for them. Mutations, no. So this means they didn't introduce any mutations into the protein um, in order to get it to crystallize, other than like truncating the region. Um, it tells you when it was deposited, um, when it was released. So usually they will deposit the structure before it's released because they um, deposit it while like the article is under review and stuff, um, and then the PDB will hold it until they publish the paper, um, and then they can release it. Um, you can re you can re release data without having a paper, but um, the authors usually, or the journals, I'm not sure how it works exactly, but they want to withhold they want to hold off on um, publishing releasing the actual data until the paper is released. In the previous video and the full video, I told you about part here, which is telling you about the quality of the structure. And then it gives you the information for the, um, the associated paper, um, as well as a list of what is in here. So you can see the the molecule, so this is um, the B-cell lymphoma leukemia 11A, so that's the BCL 11A that we were um, talking about before. Um, and it has these two chains, which we'll talk about. Those are just Sometimes different copies different of protein, the same protein this case, within this. Um, and then the protein feature view, which will, so this is the sequence of the protein. Um, what you'll see here in gray, so these are unmodeled regions. So this region of the protein is going to show up in the model as like a dotted line because it was present in the protein, but it the data for that region was, um, wasn't strong enough for them to actually model it in. So when they got that blobby meshy thing, the mesh in that region wasn't high enough quality for them to actually try to fit in the atoms. We also see small molecules, so this is saying that it binds to, uh, or that they also found a zinc atom in here. And then you get more information about the experimental stuff. So this is an x-ray diffraction, so it's, this is a crystallography structure. Um, it's giving you information about these various crystallography um, terms. If you go to the 3D view, this is where you can see the structure um, and, and see it in 3D and play around with it. So right now, what you're looking at is you're looking at the um, a biological assembly, which is like the basic functional unit type of thing that you would think about if you were thinking about the protein. When we talked about like the crystal being 
this repeating pattern of like brick sort of things, those brick sort of things would be your unit cells. Within the unit cell, there can be multiple copies of the protein or the complex or whatever it is that you want to look at. The smallest unique part um, is called the asymmetric unit. I um, mean, you can have multiple asymmetric units within your unit cell. We have these things like called space groups, which will let you make one unit cell from one asymmetric unit, and then lattice translations, where you make a whole crystal from one unit cell. So the important thing just to keep in mind is that you can use, as long as you know the asymmetric unit and you know the space group, and the lattice translation, figure out where every single identical atom would be in every place throughout the crystal and this will allow you to use the that fancy um, software math stuff to figure out where the atoms were based on the signal spots you get in that diffraction pattern. What we were looking at um, when we were back at the PDB at that point, we were looking at one of the biological assemblies, which is one of the, like the biologically relevant form. So in this case, it's the protein, so the, um, which is in teal here, bound to the DNA region of, so of that promoter sequence. So, but within the asymmetric unit, so remember the asymmetric unit was the um, smallest unique part. And so within that smallest unique part, we actually have two copies of the protein DNA complex. And so this is where we got those that um, chain A and chain B. And so those are two copies of the same thing. The molecules are slightly different um, in their like position and shape or whatever. So you can't like directly go from one to the other. Together they make the unique part. And then you have lots and lots of copies of them. So within this asymmetric unit, then so we have the unit cell. Um, so remember that was where we can take that asymmetric unit. We use these space group um, formula recipe things for figuring out how to make the unit cell from it. And then the unit cell um, with these um, lattice transitions can make the whole crystal. And so if you look at the unit cell, um, in this case it has multiple copies of that asymmetric unit, um, and then you have multiple asymmetric units in that, in the crystal. So right now we're looking at one of the biological assemblies. If we, we can choose what we're looking at. If we go here to the assembly ID, um, so if we wanted to look at the second one, you can see that this one is um, slightly different and it has less of the protein is actually visible. If I look at model, we see them both. So let's go back to the best, the better looking one. Um, okay, so this was the chain. So you can see here this dotted line. That's a region that is unmodeled. So it was present in the protein, but it, the structure, like the data wasn't good enough. And so you can see that such regions are shaded light gray in the sequence representation. And you can also, um, you, there's a lot of different things you can do to play around with various, um, seeing various things. But right now I wanna show you the density. Um, so if we look at the density, we'll just look at this um, part and view, we'll do view the, around the whole structure and update. Okay, so now what you see is you can see the structure that they built, the model that they built into this map. So if we turn, we can turn off this cartoon view and we'll turn off these and now you can see so this is the sort of thing that you get this the electron map on um, the electron density map so this is working backwards from those diffraction spots you get this meshy mappy thing and so if we look at this now knowing what the structure is you can see here you can see like the DNA um, and that sort of thing. And then with the help of the software and knowing what the sequence is, then you can build in the model. And so it's, nowadays it's um, software and stuff will help you do it. Um, and you can see that it fits nicely in here. So when you do this though, you have to, 
you have to think. So like the data that you're getting from the diffraction pattern is what you're using to build this electron density map. And then you're building the model into the map. You need to make sure that the model actually fits in the map that you're building. And so there's different, um, there's different values that we can use to assess how well the model fits the data. Um, and then also there are things that we can use to talk about how good that data is. And there are also things that we can talk about um, about how realistic the model is um, from like a structural and biochemical standpoint. And so the PDB helps us understand these. Um, and so here they're showing it in these PDB validation sliders. Um, and you can also get a lot more information if you look at the full report.